The NVIDIA GTX 1060 may just be the new mass consumer workhorse card that replaces the 970 in terms of Steam survey crushing sales. Why? Price. When the GTX 970 launched, an EVGA Superclocked Edition was about 350 US dollars. You might expect that EVGA's 1070, and everyone else's for that matter, would be about the same price. Nope. It's about $440, a 100-ish dollar increase in price. Similarly, a GTX 960 was about $210, but the fancy new 1060 ranges from $250 to $300, and I expect the non-crappy plastic ones to start at $280 or $290. Is it worth the price increase? Can it live up to the hype? Let's find out. MassDrop is featuring the Fostex THX00 headphones with new ebony color ear cups. Check them and other drops out at the link in the video description. So yes, the GTX 1060 is here, and with it comes a fancy new Pascal GPU named GP106. A step down from the GP104 sporting GTX 1080 and 1070s, but still with a lot of the goodies and performance improvements which come with being on the Pascal platform at all. The biggest story here, however, is how it will fare against AMD's offering, the RX 480. This is the first time there has been a Pascal GPU launch since the 480 was released. So that makes it interesting. First though, specs. The 1060 features 1,280 CUDA cores, a boost clock of 1,708 MHz, 6 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM, which is clocked at 8 gigabit per second, and an overall memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second. And all of that is wrapped up in a TDP package of only 120 watts. We'll see how all of this translates to performance later on. Next, let's have a look at the all-new cooler design. It's clearly related design-wise to the cooler found on on the Founders Edition of the 1070 and 1080, but has some core differences, like no backplate, an NVIDIA logo that doesn't light up, a physical extension beyond the PCB to house the fan, a slightly relaxed angularity design, and no window to look into the heatsink fans for. The die-cast aluminum body also contains two copper heat pipes embedded into the base of an aluminum heatsink, but what this card doesn't have, to much surprise, is an SLI connector. Now, NVIDIA's official statement on this, more or less, is that if you want more performance, you should just buy a 1070 or 1080 instead of two 1060s, citing that they would rather focus their support on SLI setups for those cards instead. That being said, you will still be able to use multiple 1060s together in certain games if those games are able to take advantage of MDA or LDA explicit modes in DirectX 12. I'd highly suggest checking out my video on the confusing state of SLI and multiple GPU setups. Raw performance wise it walked all over the RX 480 in every title except for Hitman which admittedly is a pretty AMD tuned title. It won in Crisis 3, Star Wars Battlefront and Tomb Raider all at 1440p with very high settings enabled by 7, 8 and 10 FPS respectively. Then in Hitman it lost at those same settings by about 4 FPS. Then to layer on top of that, the story was rather similar at 4K with medium settings. But this isn't the whole story, and AMD fans, before you rush down to the comments and start screaming at me for being what is kind of a shill at this point, we must recognize that the 1060 is 25 to 50% more expensive than the RX 480, and that's where the conversation changes. In the dollars per frame race, the RX 480 wins every single time. Sometimes by rather narrow margins, other than the massive gap in Hitman, but it still wins. Does that mean the 1060 is a bad card and AMD wins? No. But to be clear, that totally doesn't mean AMD lost either. That's not what I'm saying. The price and performance deltas on these cards are significant enough that I don't even fully agree with them being in the same category. Sure, if you buy the most expensive RX 480 and the cheapest 1060, they more or less equate in price, but that's a rather odd competition. I'm happy with the 1060, and I'm very happy with the 480. It's a good time to be a PC gamer. That's basically all I have to say.
And it's a good time to be a mobile app developer looking for a simple payment solution. All you gotta do is check out the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is one small snippet of code and you can be all set up in less than 10 minutes. They even have support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you need them. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven programming languages. This makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, Android Pay, cards, and more, all with that quick, simple, single integration. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash Linus. Thanks for watching, guys. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Get subscribed if you want to see more graphics card videos. These things are going crazy lately because everyone's releasing all these different models and stuff, and I'm going to check basically all of them out. So hopefully you like graphics card videos. Uh, don't forget to check out Amazon if you want to buy a 1060. Check out the forum if you want to discuss a 1060. Check out the link in the video description down below if you want to buy a cool shirt. And uh, check out this video for our 1070 Super Clocked review.